a raw material full of character and natural beauty, hard wearing, breathable, durable and warm. That's leather. But what actually is leather? Raw hides preserved in salt are delivered to the tannery. The salt prevents any decay of the skin for a short period of time. The hides are sorted into different categories depending on what they are to be used for after the tanning process. The salt and coarse dirt are removed in stainless steel barrels to prepare the skins for the next step, softening or milling. Softening takes place in rotating barrels where the last of the dirt and any residues of salt are removed. The skins are then soaked in a solution of lime in a water bath to loosen and remove any hair. This liming process takes a few hours. After the water bath, the raw, closed structure of the skin is now ready for the next step and can be prepared for the tanning process. The hair-free, softened skins are individually transported to the next stage. The skins are then put through rotating roller blades to remove any remaining tissues and grease, a process known as flashing. The waste product from this process goes towards the production of glue and gelatin, among others, and can be used in pharmaceutical products and food. The raw skins are trimmed to remove any unusable pieces. This waste product is also used in the production of gelatin. In the next step, the skins will be split. The splitting ensures a uniform thickness to the leather. The splitting of the skins can, incidentally, also take place at a later stage during the tanning process. The skins are split into two layers. The thicker top layer, the more precious full grain leather, is used in the production of upholstered furniture. The lower quality bottom layer is used for the production of shoes, bags and clothing. This, the top layer, is the valuable grain ladder used for our upholstery. The thickness of the ladder is regularly checked throughout the entire manufacturing process. Tanning prevents the decay of the skin and makes it durable. By the addition of tannins, such as mineral salts, the raw leather is preserved. Effluents and any residual materials are reprocessed and used again. Throughout, tests are carried out to check how far the tannins have penetrated into the skin. The tanning process takes about 24 hours to complete. Tanning produces a wet, blue-gray raw leather, the so-called wet blue.
The subsequent draining of the skins is called wilting away. The waste is recycled and can be reused for tanning. The wet blue skins are stacked on pellets in preparation for further processing. Checks on the thickness of the leather take place again and again. As previously mentioned, the skins can be split earlier or at this wet blue stage. Both methods are possible. Splitting at the wet blue stage can save time in the overall tanning process. The skins are now sorted according to various quality criteria. Next is the folding process, which determines the thickness of the leather. This is done by shaving off the bottom layer. The resulting shavings are collected and processed to produce leather fabric, which is used, for example, in the shoe industry for the manufacture of soles. Now the leather is sorted in preparation for colouring. The skins are colored in rotating barrels. These days, water-soluble dyes are used for dyeing. Characteristic properties such as for example the softness of the leather can be adjusted at this stage by the addition of oils. The rotating wooden barrels contain the leather skins and additives and dyeing is started after a check on the control panel. The leather hides remain in the coloring barrels for about 24 hours until they are completely saturated with dye. The barrels are then emptied. Next, the wet skins are drained and they are passed through rolling machines to be smoothed and stretched. It is here that any scars are smoothed out. At this stage the leather hides are still damp, but are now ready for drying. Various drying methods can be used. In this method, the leather is clamped to a frame and dried under tension to produce a smooth, wrinkle-free finish and ensures that the leather retains its natural, distinctive grain. The hydraulic tension of the frame is increased to stretch the leather to remove wrinkles. The heights pass through the hot air inside the oven to dry the leather so it can then be processed. Another method is vacuum drying. Here, the leather is placed on heated plates. 
The water evaporates to dry the leather and any imperfections and natural features are ironed out. This gives the leather a smooth surface. Hang drying is only used for thin and soft leathers and this leather is not usually used in the upholstered furniture industry. This filling process obscures any scars and bumps on the skin. It is often used in low-priced leather to achieve a better finish. The leather is then pressed to smooth the surface. The leather is now softened or milled in rotating barrels, which enhances the natural grain, making it more visible. This process can take place before or after the finishing of the leather. Finishing is the process to achieve the final look of the leather. The leather is dressed with wave of thin layers of a protective coating using rotating spray guns. Properties such as appearance, softness and breathability depend on the amount of pigmentation applied. The hides are dried between each layer. The leather in different categories is classified according to the thickness of the pigmentation, from light to strong pigmentation. The leather can now be embossed to improve the uniformity of the hide. Embossing can be light or deep, depending on the finish required and what will be the most suitable for the design of model that it will be used on. Embossing does not affect the quality of the leather, it is a visual effect only. The tunnel machine stretches the leather selectively by using constant vibration. The leather hides are massaged, so to speak, to smooth and soften the leather to prevent wrinkling. This stage can take place before or after the leather is dressed. At every stage of the entire process, quality control checks are carried out. Depending on the requirement for the finished hide, they can be ironed to achieve a matte, smooth or shiny finish. The skins are then measured and the size of the skin is stamped on the back of the leather. After checking the hides, they are batched, packaged and prepared for shipping. The transport of the finished hides to Himola takes place largely through our own fleet of vehicles. On arrival at Himola, the vehicle is unloaded. The folded letters must be unpacked immediately. Each new delivery is thoroughly checked in the laboratory to specific German standards for quality, tear resistance, tensile strength, seam slippage, 
and color fasteners. The heights will only be released for use once successfully tested. So to produce this natural product is a complex process. This long-lasting, durable and breathable upholstery material is unique and individual, just like our customers.